Welcome to our cooking show with Erica Coquin. This is our Christmas special. During this show, we're going to be making jingalumhas, which is the primary best known food of the Armenian region of Artsakh. As with any cooking, the key is preparation and ingredients. Flour, salt, red pepper, and 17 kinds of greens and herbs. Some of them being jirchirok, dirtunjuk, ginsmensuk, and my favorite of all time, paravi pot. First, you add water. But you know, preparation actually is the key to a lot of things and not simply making jingle of hot. In fact, you know, in some ways, failing to prepare is preparing to fail, which is part of the tragedy that we've been dealing with this year. You know, actually for the last three years, uh, we have been dealing with what we haven't done for 30 years, which is to build a proper state, uh, a proper economy, uh, and a proper military. And we paid for it in this year. Uh, worse than in other years by having 120,000 of our compatriots having to move off of land that they've lived on for more than 2,000 years and having the land of our forefathers that was left to us at this point being defiled by a regime of genocidal fascists. Now we're going to move on to chopping the greens, in this case the green onions. And, oh, by the way, I forgot. We have your questions for the week that you've all been turning in. So let's get the first question and let's get that rolling. Likadina asks, how do you foresee Pashinyan's legacy playing out 10 years from now? Will he go down as the incompetent fool who lost Artsakh or the one who divorced Armenia from the Russians and took it into the West? Well, in some ways, that's sort of the ultimate question. Uh, and the, the answer to that is something that we're gonna know a lot better over the next 10 years. Uh, you know, there's a, I remember a story having to do with the last Polish communist leader, Wojciech Jaruzelski, and uh, there was an issue at his funeral. And Lech Walesa, who was the head of the Solidarity Movement and the first president of uh, post-communist Poland, was at the funeral and people were yelling at him, you know. Uh, you know, someone asked, was this man a traitor or was he a patriot? And walking out, he said a little bit of both. I think history is complicated. And if 10 years from now, Armenia is a Western country, a much more prosperous country, a much more secure country, you would say he's much more of a patriot. If the opposite is true, then you can actually make the case for the opposite. At Drampo asks, what do you think Armenia's future is in terms of population growth and immigration? Well, that question, which is in a lot of people's minds, is pretty much, you know, for the most part, entirely dependent on economic growth, because that's the key in uh, determining how large of a population we're going to have here. And that's going to include two things, getting people not to migrate out and having the kind of in-migration that we're having right now. 2021 High asks, how can Armenia survive the oil pipeline plan being forged by the U.S. through our territory? I don't know what oil pipeline you're referring to because there's actually no oil pipelines in plan for the primary reason being if the, if the object is that there's oil pipelines from Baku, they are done with uh, oil production somewhere around 2030. So I don't know where you got that information from, but that's not uh, likely to happen. At High Guy 25 asks, a question a lot of us are wondering, as a Republican voter, why is Trump bad for Armenia if he's elected in 2024? It's very hard to know that. Uh, it's a very good question. I think that's really a function of which Trump are we talking about? Are we talking about the Trump of 2020? Are we talking about a different kind of Trump? The primary issue is that now there is Armenia is far more in the camp of the West and in the United States in many ways. Uh, the chaos that uh, an administration like that can bring can cause us problems as far as the attention span of the West for this area, which is some of what happened during the 2020 war. Uh, so I think it's mostly the fear of the unknown than necessarily where he's going to go to. Uh, he does have personal 
uh, relationships with uh, the leading family in Baku. Uh, but uh, I think it's more of a question mark to be answered because things can be different this time, uh, especially as Armenia's cause becomes a bigger cause with many people in the Republican Party, as it seems to be becoming. At Simaru asks, your solution to problems that Armenia faces are solid, especially the garrison state mindset. Do you guys actually try to communicate them directly to the government? Well, I mean, that's not the kind of question that you really answer on a show like this, but uh, many of us who have such ideas are in constant contact with many people in the government. Uh, but I think this is more complicated than that. I think uh, uh, the issue is not what we know needs to be done. It's the wherewithal to do it uh, and having the uh, political will, one and two, leadership and management, which is quite lacking in Armenia, especially when it comes to middle levels of any organization. So yes, the communication is there, uh, but on different levels and with different people with different set of results. Akrav History asks, question for Eric, what's your favorite Armenian wine? I'm not as refined as I seem. I'm far more of a whiskey and vodka guy, so I'm the wrong person to ask about wine, but I do know we have great wines and if I had a favorite, I wouldn't discriminate by naming one of them over the others. At Yengibar Manasyan asks, While without a capable army, Armenia doesn't stand a chance. You think that Armenia has a real opportunity to build a new and professional armed forces to solve the security issues that we have now? Yes, uh, that's uh, on some level happening. It is not happening as fast as any of us would want, but uh, reforming a military is a function of resources, will, political will, uh, organization and public support. So yes, are we capable of it? Absolutely. Is it happening fast enough? No, uh, but uh, are we capable of doing it? Absolutely, yes. At TikTok Armgov asks, the Syrian Turkish earthquakes of 2023 mirror the devastation of our own Spitak earthquake in 88. What has been done to prepare Armenia's buildings for seismic events? Very little. In reality, the only preparation work that I know is that our schools that are being rehabbed uh, and uh, reinforced for possible earthquakes. Uh, a lot of the new construction which is happening in Armenia tends to be better of quality and more secure, uh, but that's also hit and miss. Uh, but for the most part, to answer your question, that's a 90% fail as far as what really needs to be done. At Xavier Laflamme 8773 asks, is Turkey truly interested in opening the border with Armenia or are they just using it as leverage against Armenia? Do we truly see that border opening? And if so, what are the benefits to Turkey and Armenia? Uh, I frankly don't see uh, an opening of the border. Uh, I think as far as the positives and negatives, on a positive ledger, uh, the biggest issue is uh, lessening of transportation costs. And depending on who you listen to, that will have varying different uh, degrees on our cost of imports and cost of exports. As far as the negative risks, it's frankly to our agricultural industry because they have economies of scale and both of these countries are members of the WTO. So to have a regulated system uh, of commerce and uh, their agriculture sector can actually overwhelm a lot of our small producers. That's the, probably the biggest risk on the negative side. At JDAM6017 asks, with Georgia just getting an EU accession status, is it a paving the road to Armenia in the same direction? Uh, well, I mean, if you look at the law, if you look at the uh, the policies of this government and its pivot west, specifically in involvement with the EU, that seems to be the logical conclusion of where this country is heading. Uh, but that's going to be a complicated issue, uh, especially with the Eurasian Union that we're in, the Russian-backed version of the EU. But uh, it's very hard to see us not going in that direction, given the fact that we're frankly much better candidates for the EU than Georgia is at this point and many other countries in front of us on that list. At AJ asks, do you think the crossroad of peace project may bring peace to Armenia? Thank you for your weekly analysis. No, the crossroads of peace is actually a great marketing ploy by our foreign ministry uh, to show that this country is dedicated to peace and opening all borders. Uh, realistically, it's not something that I foresee happening. And in, in, on moral terms, frankly, uh, you can't have the crossroads for peace until you've had the crossroads for justice, which we certainly don't have at this point.
At A. Oganesian asks, How does Armenia prevent the garrison state from becoming an ultranationalist bubble, which has been historically the downside to garrison states from Sparta and Prussia to some states at war that occupy the news these days? Well, you're asking a very, very good question, but that's not a uh, luxury we have at this point. I think this is a function of, uh, first, we need to put ourselves in a position to have the luxury of that discussion. But I think it's a legitimate one. But what we've learned is, and what's key for us is, given our neighbors uh, being interested in peace, uh, striving for peace is not a guarantee of your security. The guarantee of your security is having capabilities that are first equal to your enemies and in the long run, greater than your enemies. At Das 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 Debel, the Armenian-Russian relationship is obviously strained and for good reason. Do you see it transforming into a transactional relationship like Russia-Azerbaijan? If so, what does Armenia still offer to Russia? Well, yes, absolutely. I think in the long run, obviously, no matter what happens with the pivot in the West, Russia is an important part of this world, an important part of the world. So the relationship is going to continue. But I think it will become far more transactional. And I think the, in the long term, the most likely scenario is for Armenia to actually become the entree uh, of Russia to be integrated back in the West or actually have contact with the West or trade with the West. So I think that's the more likely scenario that we'll be looking at. Balayan underscore Gag asks, Your analysis is always great. Why don't you try and take a job in the Armenian government? We need people like you. You know, I get that question asked all the time, and in, in reality, it's not something that I have any interest in. And frankly, it doesn't shoot me temperamentally. It's not something that I'm interested in. However, it raises a good question, which is uh, the number of diasporans that can actually contribute to uh, the highest levels of this government. And this is something that we as a people have sort of you know, failed on in trying to uh, bring in really qualified people in uh, all levels of our government. So I would encourage other people to do so, but that's not something that I'm interested in doing myself. Lucine3 asks, do you think Pashinyan will call for snap elections in 2024? If yes, no, why? Do you see new leaders in Armenia who can challenge Nikol? Oh, I think there's a, there's probably a, uh, 50-50 chance that he's going to call elections sometime this year or over the next 18 months. And I think the, the reasons for that are going to be the fact that by 2026, he's going to be less popular than he is today. And the opposition is still not particularly organized. And if there's elections today, most likely he will come in first with a smaller majority and have to form a coalition government, but then that'll give him another five-year mandate. So I'm assuming that we're going to move towards elections sometime over the next 18 months. Grishikian asks, where are we on the corruption level year-over-year -year progress? Well, I think there's... Uh, well, we have, we have obviously still corruption in Armenia, and it's not going to go away that easily. Uh, but what we have is we don't have opportunity killing corruption. We have petty corruption, and we have corruption that has less of an impact on people's lives. There's no police officers asking for bribes every two minutes. So we've made progress on that, uh, but frankly, there's a lot more that can be done. Uh, and in fact, I think with this new government, uh, they need to be always on watch, given the fact that we really haven't reformed our judiciary. Uh, but the good news is what we don't have is opportunity killing uh, corruption. There's no monopolies, uh, and people can essentially operate their businesses uh, and make a living. So the corruption that we do have, uh, it's somewhat similar to what you have in the West, where people get preferential treatments and contracts and things like that. But for the most part, it doesn't affect people's lives. But this is not something we should be satisfied with, and there's a lot more work to be done on that front. At Ara Pasha Skander asks, do you think the Armenians of Artsakh should go back? To answer that question, I think uh, I don't see that in the uh, immediate run. 
Uh, I think that's more of a long-term thing. And it depends on a couple of factors. First and foremost, uh, the, we need to continue always fighting for the rights of people to return because it's their legal international right. The second one, and the more important one, is actually to build a strong, prosperous Armenia. And the last two reasons why people from Artsakh will eventually go back is that uh, the second Armenian genocide is not going to go unanswered. And uh, the fourth reason is because Azerbaijan as a country has an expiration date. And when the time comes, the other side will be dealt with faster than rabbits get fucked. Okay, okay, guys, I know it's a family show, so this is how we close this. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to all of you uh, from all of us here on this show. F it, let's eat. <laughs>